But the exciting part is what all of this unlocks once you start to tokenize these particular assets. One aspect is integrity. So I want you to imagine a particular transaction where you have a bond or any other financial instrument really, and it could even be the tokenized uh, real estate that I mentioned. On the other side of the equation, you have a buyer who, who's going to pay in some form of cash, and let, let's call it tokenized cash for now. In a typical environment, particularly in commercial banking, that type of transaction can take multiple days. Uh, there's a significant amount of counterparty risk involved, even though those organizations typically interact uh, over a multi-year period. And so the one ability of tokenization is really to minimize that level of counterparty risk by reducing the period of time taken for those particular transactions. The second one is in automation. Uh, some of you may not know, but some of the largest transactions, the most popular financial instruments in the world actually get governed by uh, highly outdated computer software or even sometimes spreadsheets and phone calls, even in this day and age. So there's a very much an efficiency play to be had. The third element is liquidity, and we'll talk about this in more detail. But there's an opportunity to really enable this seamless interaction of assets and cash and enabling far more velocity uh, in terms of interactions. And the last part is transparency. We've seen with so many of the issues that have cropped up both in crypto, but also in broader banking, where there's a need for auditability of transactions, of assets, and so on. And that's really the promise of what tokenization offers.